Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel guys. What I have for you guys today, I have episode 3 of the Preston North End Career Mode. So first of all, thank you so much for all the support you guys have shared on the series so far. It's been absolutely crazy guys. But if you do recall yourself back to the last episode, the thing I asked you guys was do you want me to use the Scout Future Start option in this career mode? And here are the results of that poll guys. So as you can see, you guys have voted for that we use the Scout Future Star feature. So apologies to the people that voted no, but obviously I have to go for the majority here. And it was quite an overwhelming yes that you guys want me to use it so uh, I think it'll be a nice thing to add to this series as uh, what the board are looking for as well they're looking for us to bring through a youth academy player so I think by doing this it'll help us in that aspect as well so we'll go ahead now and, and redeem this item so uh, I think this could add to the series quite a bit really well as we can see here guys the scout has now been dispatched so it'll be interesting to see where we can get him back in the next couple of days in terms of a position I'm looking for I'm hoping it won't be a goalkeeper or a defender really I wouldn't like that to be a, a midfielder or a striker would be ideal really but First things first, guys, we do actually have a game to start out this video, guys. We are coming up against QPR, so we'll go ahead and sort out the team now. Okay, guys, so this is the team I'm going to go for. I made a couple of changes since the last episode to the team selection, but I brought Alan Brown into the team, giving Gallagher a bit of a rest for this one. I'm also bringing Rawson in for his debut. So I brought him in for Bailey Wright because Bailey Wright at the moment, he's got he's a little bit tired. He's not at full fitness. So I thought I'd bring Rawson in for his debut, and hopefully he'll be able to impress us. So for the first game of the episode, guys, we are away to QPR. So in real life, we did actually win this fixture, and as you can see, their QPR haven't had the best of starts this season so hopefully we'll be able to capitalise on that. It was a decent episode last time I mean we got that game against Derby which we really should have won. They actually scored a last minute penalty so hopefully we'll rectify that and put things right here and get all three points in this one. They got a decent team on FIFA 17 QPR I'm not going to lie about that and they definitely looked dangerous in the early stages of the game here and QPR managed to take the lead and it was a good finish I'm not sure who actually got that in. It was a very good finish by him and as you can see QPR after only 5 minutes in this game are oh, 1-0 we're going to have to come back from this and uh, it's a bit annoying. There's a little bit of a kit clash here. It's annoying that the Preston's yellow third kit isn't available on FIFA because our second kit is blue and our home kit's white, so it's, there's a bit of a kit clash anyway, but uh, not an ideal start for us. As you can see, it's a very good finish by their player. I'm not going to deny that. It was first time. Got past Lindegaard. Blimey, we've got a mountain to climb now. Nice play from us here. If we can get the ball to back to DJ, we can. DJ, can he finish this? DJ, yes! Daniel Johnson manages to finish it. And in the 22nd minute, pressing the back into this game. And uh, we've we've been on top since QPR have scored. They've seemed to have sunk back into their shell a little bit. But uh, a nice little bit of link-up play there between Beckford and Daniel Johnson. A fantastic finish in the end. I thought the touch he'd taken had just been a bit too big. But in the end, it was ideal. And Johnson, very good finish from him there. I think this camp position is really what suits him best. Oh, can we get something extremely late on here? Let's get the ball into Ben Pringle. Pringle, what can he do? Maybe you can send the ball into the middle. He finds Hugel at the back stick. He manages to pull it back to Gallagher. Gallagher will release it. Oh, the shot's blocked. Maybe we can get something back here still, though. Gallagher, can he get the ball out wide to get a cross in? He can. He gets the ball in. The keeper punches, but we get the ball out. Oh, Callum Robinson, I think that was with the opportunity. What a massive save that was from the QPR keeper. If we look at this here, literally, this would have been the last kick of the game. Robinson rifles it on the volley, but it was a fantastic save, to be fair to him. We still have the chance to win this, though, with Gallagher. Gallagher will whip this one in. Cunningham wins the header. No one can get there. Gallagher's going to have to send this one in back. First time. Get the header there. No one manages to get it still. Got the ball with Hugo. And that is full time, guys. So a dramatic end where we could have potentially won that match then but it has actually ended 1-1 at Loftus Road so uh, I would have liked to win this match really considering where QPR are currently in the table but uh, in the grand scheme of things a point away from home it's not too bad. So we are of course continuing with our training with these players here so we'll see if any of them do actually get any growth in today and as we can see there Ben Pearson has managed to go up a rating he is now a 67 rated player so uh, definitely looking to get a lot out of Ben Pearson this season because I think he's got a very good potential this year actually. Okay guys so next up on the calendar we now have Ipswich so another word away game. It's going to be a difficult one this, but we'll go ahead and pick the team for it now. Okay guys, so I'm going to go for a very similar lineup to the QPR one. However, I have made a couple of tweaks here and there. I've brought Bailey right back into the starting 11 and I've also brought Paul Gallagher back into the starting 11. As well as that, I've also got Callum Robinson in for Ben Pringle. As I feel like he adds quite a bit, Callum Robinson, but uh, this is the team we're going to go with. I'm sticking with Jermaine Beckford up front as he did get an assist in the last match. However, off the bench, we do have three strikers ready to come on, so let's try and get all three points in this one. Okay guys, so here we go. Away to Ipswich Town. So yet again, it's not going to be an easy one, another away fixture. They always seem to be a bit harder, but uh, with the team we got and the outset that we got going on at the moment, the current form we're in, I'm feeling confident going into this one, really. Let's see where we can go with this. Here's a uh, ball with Robinson. Robinson, what can he do? Looks to cut inside of his man. Does extremely well. Hey, Callum Robinson, can he finish? Oh, Robinson! Oh, he's just put that wide. I thought the keeper got a touch on it then, but he just put it wide. He got into a fantastic position there, just didn't have the finish. 
Oh, that's an excellent bit of play. DJ plays through Jermaine Beckford. Surely he'll finish this. Jermaine Beckford. Oh, the keeper makes an excellent save. Can DJ follow up with anything? DJ still on the ball. Daniel Johnson's going to need a bit of support here. We'll try and play in Cunningham. That's a great ball. Oh, we can't get there. But Robinson's there. Oh, he's managed to get the ball in the back of the net. But it's given offside. We were so close then to breaking the deadlock. An excellent interception that time. McGeady's going to get his ball into, into the middle. Beckford gets there. Is that going in? Oh, the keeper makes a great save. And we still can't break the deadlock. Beckford's deserved the goal in this game just for his persistency but we got a corner here nice bit of play here here's dj what can dj do can he look to thread a pass to anyone or look to get the ball onto his right foot for a shot got the decent ball there into gallagher gallagher has the shot gallagher yes paul gallagher's managed to get it into the back of the net and in the first half we finally managed to break the deadlock i believe that's another assist there for daniel johnson i think he's got quite a few so far in this series that cam spot really is getting the best out of him but it's paul gallagher this time fantastic bit of work from dj here looking to get it on his stronger left foot manages to play in Gallagher and Gallagher just with a little cheeky dink over the keeper. It's a very cheeky finish from him and uh, yet again it's quite similar to last season really. A lot of our goals are contributed from midfield and the same looks to be going on in this career mode but Paul Gallagher 1-0. Okay, which have a corner here. It'd be nice to keep a clean sheet in this match but it's going to be Grant on this corner. Gets the ball into McGoldrick. Oh, the, they managed to get the ball here. Got to win the second ball boys. Oh, no way is that going in. Oh my word. What was that goal that we just conceded? That is one of the most ah... Oh. I don't know how to describe that. It was just a mess in the box. I don't know what was going on here. He was it that got the touch. It was Woods that got the touch, which eluded Lindegaard. He went the wrong way then. I think that's going to go down as a known goal there. Oh, it was Woods with the touch. Lindegaard just, he was caught off balance there. That's a really frustrating one to concede, to be honest, because I've not felt like it's which have deserved to get back into this match. That's a good ball in there. Out wide. Got to get this ball clear. No messing around there. Oh, Tom Clark. What has he just done? I don't know why, but for some reason, Clark took a touch before he went to clear it. I just clicked clear it on my controller. But for some reason, he's not done that. It was just a mess at the back, really. I'm not sure how he's managed to get that much time. But Clark, oh, why did he take that touch? If he was just to get that clear first time, we wouldn't be in this situation there. But that's a Tom Clark mistake. Lindegaard could do nothing about that. And we've thrown away our lead here because I'd be devastated to lose this now. Okay, Lindegaard's up for this corner, guys. In the last last minute here. We're in the 89th minute. If Gallagher can whip in a decent delivery. Oh, it's not bad, but it falls to Clayton at the far post. He's going to get hit. Oh, Lindegaard almost got that in. I'm not lying there. Lindegaard almost got that in. We got the ball out here with Gallagher, though. Gallagher will get the ball in this time. Gets a decent one in. Ah, oh, Clayton can't really win that header, can he? Ah, oh, that is full time, guys. So, in the end, Ipswich have actually managed to turn this game around and win 2-1 in the end. I'll say in the first half, we absolutely dominated. In the second half, I will admit, our quality did fade towards the end. And uh, the second half, which probably did have the better of it, but I felt like we would deserve at least a point from this match, really. Okay, guys, so the transfer window is just about to come to a close, so here are our deals for this transfer window. So, as you can see, we spent 1.1 million, and all the outs there have been loaned, so we've not really had any outs this season, but as you can see there, the transfer window is now officially shut, so until January, this is the squad we're left with, and uh, to be honest, I think I'm quite happy with the squad we've currently got. And here we go, guys, the scout has returned, so this is from the scout future star, which we saw at the start of the episode, and as we can see here, he's actually a Cam, he's from uh, Holland there and uh, he's got a potential from 76 to 94 so uh, Sa Sem van der Linden so uh, this guy looks very decent indeed, wow look at that pace he's got 94 acceleration 84 sprint speed, this guy could be an absolute monster in the game and we're actually really looking forward to seeing what this guy can do, as you can see there he's 16 he's already 56 rated so uh, with a bit of training I think come the end of the season we could be seeing him in around the mid 60s really so uh, I'll go ahead and offer this guy a contract of course we're going to offer him a contract but uh, maybe this could be like the new Daniel Johnson of the series where really but uh, we'll add him as a future first team player and uh, I'm excited to get this guy in the squad now okay guys so our next match is now against Barnsley so I'm actually going to simulate this match as uh, I don't really want us to stagnate on a couple of months I want us to keep this series flowing quite quickly but uh, as you can see that is the squad we're going with quite a similar lineup however I have shifted around the back for a little bit we got Vermeil, Huntington, Wright and Spur playing in that so we'll go ahead and skip this and oh my word as you can see there we've actually won 5-0 against Barnsley. That is an absolutely mad scoreline. Goal scorers here, we've got Tommy Spur, Gallagher picking up two, McGeevy getting one, and also Johnson getting one. My only worry here is that Beckford got an injury. Hopefully this isn't going to be for long. Uh, as you can see here, guys, Jermaine Beckford is going to be out for five weeks, so really that's not ideal. However, with the squad we've currently got, 
I think it's it's going to offer an opportunity really for a lot of other people to step up into that position. So we'll see who's going to fill that hole. And also Van der Linden has accepted his contract. So here are his stats. So bear in mind guys, this guy is only 16 years old. So for a 16 year old, these are some pretty decent stats. But as we can see there, he's got five star skill moves, which is absolutely fantastic. So we now got two five star skillers in the squad, which is just absolutely mad. He's got a three star weak foot, medium low work rates, which isn't too bad. He's left footed. He can play cam, centre mid or centre forward. So he's quite diverse and he is six foot. So I'm looking forward to getting some use out of this guy. Okay guys, so for the last game of the episode, we're coming up against Cardiff. So this is the squad we're going to go with. As you can see, we have made some, quite a few changes to this match. So the reason for that is, this game is actually a Tuesday night match. So quite a few of our first team players are suffering from fatigue. As we can see here, there's quite a few people that are uh, quite short on fitness. But I've actually gone for a two-strike formation here. We're giving Ewan Doyle his first start of this season and Stevie May as well. So in the absence of Jermaine Beckford, I'm looking for one of these to step up definitely. On the bench, then we've got Mackinock and Hugo who are both capable of coming on. But this is the team we're going to to start with and hopefully we'll end up this video with a win. Okay guys so here we go into our last game of today's episode and we are under the floodlights at Deepdale guys and uh, this should be an interesting match. In real life we did actually win this match and so we'll be looking to win it in real life here as well. We're up against Cardiff of course so let's see if we can do them. And then here with DJ. DJ plays the ball into Stevie May. He'll play the ball out wide to Aidan McGee. McGee, that's a fantastic bit of skill there. Can he get the ball across? He can. Oh, that's almost an own goal from their player. I was trying to get the ball to Erwin Doyle at the back stick. He almost got it, to be fair to him. He might get something there. Doyle does well to get around this man. Doyle, oh, the shot was erratic then. He just wasn't calm on the ball, and he's blazed it over the crossbar. He just needed a cool head then to stick it into the back of the net, but he shanked at it, and it's gone over the bar. Big chance this for Doyle and May, really, in Beckford's absence, but they've not really shown anything so far. Well, let's go. Here's Hugill. Hugill on the attack there. Oh, that was a big challenge from their player there. You know, that could be a red card. That was an awful tackle on Jordan Hugill there. It's only going to be a yellow card there, but he was taken out then, Hugill. We've got a free kick here with Daniel Johnson. I'm going to take this one short because I'm not really too confident in taking free kicks at the moment. We shoot with Johnson. And Daniel Johnson in the 89th minute. What a game he has had today. What an episode it's been for Daniel Johnson. I think he's got, is that two goals now and assist or something like that? Or two assists and a goal? I don't know anymore, but what a, oh my word, I can't believe this. What a goal it was from Johnson. Had a little bit of a layoff there from Mackinock because I'm not really too, I'm not really very good at taking free kicks on this game, but we take a short one and with his right foot, his weaker foot, he bends that into the bottom corner. What a goal that was. I mean, it looks like we're going to win this match now, thanks to Daniel Johnson. What a perform, what an episode it's been for Johnson today. I didn't get anything here. Oh, Leximus gets a chance. Oh, Lindegaard once again coming to our rescue in this game. He's had a massive game. Him and Johnson today have been game changers for us. And that is full time, guys. So thanks to a late Daniel Johnson goal. We have managed to secure all three points here at Deepdale, but uh, what a performance this was from Daniel Johnson. I mean, today's episode just has to be dedicated to him because he was on fire today, but uh, we'll go ahead and look at the league table after that because that was mad. But just before we do that, guys, we're also going to simulate the Brentford match, so that means that the first game of the next episode will be the game against Wigan, so a bit of a Lancashire derby to start the next episode out with, guys, but we are going to simulate this game against Brentford. It's an away match at Brentford, so I'm not really expecting to get anything, and we do actually lose this match. Actually, Vermeer gets a red card there, but once again, Daniel Johnson manages to get on the score sheet, but uh, it's Woods and Sawyers who score for Brentford. In all honesty, I, I won't be too disheartened by that, really. So there is the league table, guys, to wrap up this episode. So as you can see, Preston North End are currently sitting in ninth position, which, considering how we started the season out in real life, that's actually a very good start on reflection. So as you can see, we played eight games, got three wins, three draws, and two defeats. We've scored 12 goals and currently have conceded seven, so not too bad at all currently sitting on 12 points, just outside the playoffs guys so uh, I will also show you the squad report just before we go but that is the bottom of the table for any of you wondering and I will now take you through the squad report so you can see how players are growing guys but uh, apart from that that will wrap it up for this episode guys so thank you so much for watching so if you have enjoyed this video make sure you do leave a like it is always massively appreciated guys as well as that make sure you check out all the links in the description down below and as well as that make sure you follow me on Twitter I always tweet before I upload the video therefore you'll never miss a video ever again guys but apart from that thank you so much for watching this episode of the Preston or thank career mode and I'll see you all in the next one. Till my shadow turns to sun rays. 